are now going to show you how to set up a salesperson security right. This point of sale was originally wrote in 1997 and has been updated and upgraded even until the first part of this year. One of the major things that have been updated on it is security. There's always one clerk, if you're a good sized store, that's out trying to rob you. They see the money you're making and they say, oh, we'll stick 20 bucks in uh, our pocket at the end of the day. They'll never know the difference. So what we've done through advice on our end users, which we have close to 10,000 stores using our software, is areas that they have found people cheating them. And so we'll go through where you set up your salesperson security right now. So you go up to file, salespeople, and you can search for which salesperson you're looking for here. And we'll pick John Smith. Return to search. Now this is John Smith's record. You have his information here, and I'll go over these fields in just a second. Security rights, which has sub-security rights. Accounting, you can put a social security number in here, his employee ID and his email his last sale, total number of invoices he's done, and how much money he has generated in sales, sales history, everything he's ever sold, commissions, you can set him up for commissions. Uh, again, I'll go over these fields in just a minute. UDF, um, inventory, salespeople, vendors, and customers have a UDF and that stands for a user defined field. There's a place in the software you can make these labels say what you want and use them as you want and then write special reports against them. We have 10 clerks on in our database right now and if you're using the dining room part of our software these are for setting that part up. So let's start here on the salesperson screen. When you add a new salesperson, you want to put in their name, street, city, state, zip. It's not mandatory, but it's a good idea. Their phone number so you can call them at home or on their cell phone. Are they an active clerk? If the person's still working for you and works as a salesperson, you want to check this as active clerk. If the guy has worked for you for a while and then quit, unflag him. He will not be able to sign into the software or nobody will be able to sign in under his passwords. This, lurk, this clerk can be a line item clerk. In other words, he can do sales. Is he a service technician? If he's a service technician and you set a, an item as a service rather than an item for sale, this allows him to put in his time and the amount he did. When he's signed in, does he have a cash drawer? Here's his sign-on code, his password, and admin password. If he's an administrator, you want to give him an admin password. John is signed up as an administrator and listed, and it shows it right down here in the bottom screen. He's listed as an admin. If you're using multiple cash drawers, in other words, you have two cash drawers to one station, and he has one cash drawer and another clerk has another cash drawer. You put his codes in here. When he does a sale on that station that he's sharing with other people, when he does a sale, his cash drawer will open, not the other cash drawers that's hooked to this station. Security rights. Again, you can add emergency contact and phone number. This is pretty good if um, you know, if something happens to the guy or girl, you know, you need to call somebody and you go in here and look up their contact and their phone number. So here's our security rights. Options, this color, which is blue, require an admin password to access. In other words, if you're not an admin, you can't get into the salesperson screen. Even if you are an admin and this isn't checked, you're not allowed in this screen. 
This may be for your top manager only. Data file maintenance, that means taking care of the data files. System defaults, you don't want just everybody changing those. Minor data tables, that's things like uh, which category, department, and things are set up. Single item notes report, so that there's for doing reports. Must clock in and out, so if you're using our time clock, which is built into the program, and you have this checked, he must clock in and out, and that'll be another video. Can't take cash from drawer to cover tips. In other words, he's allowed to pop open the cash drawer, take his tips out, and close the cash drawer. Can select customer from invoice screen. In our invoice screen, it defaults to a cash customer, but if this guy is allowed or this clerk is allowed to select a customer, there's a button on there to select a customer. Most of the times you want this to be accessible. Access to marketing screens, those are special screens for doing marketing. We'll show that in another video. Import, export, update options. Uh, you might not want to have them there. Exit this program. The trouble with somebody exiting the program, they may get on Google or something, party or, you know, look up stupid stuff, and you want them to stay in this program. Manage the time clock, that should be a top manager only. Reports main menu. If you want this person to run reports, you check this. Bad check set up. If um, they can set a person up that wrote you a bad check, and add that person to the bad check list so if they come in and try to buy something again it throws you up a notice that they sent they did a bad check to you can do backups there's no problem with that can edit serial numbers usually everybody can do that can change store number this you don't want anybody to have access except yourself the store owner and uh, but you change a store number that throws all kinds of kinks into the system can write checks. There's a check writing routine built into the program so that you can direct deposit and um, depends on how much you trust a person to write a check. Can email customers. That's no big deal. Can create special orders. We have a complete special order part of our program and most of the time you want somebody to be able to do it. Can add new vendor coupons. Uh, that's questionable on who you want to do that. Upload and download from the cloud. Um, we do have a multi-store program which allows data to go up and down, from, up to and down from the cloud. So this allows that person to do it. Okay, now this tab allows a person to go to the customer screen and do certain things. If this person doesn't need to be in the customer screen at all, just uncheck that and that'll override all these settings. Some of the things the clerk may want to do is customer detail screen, which shows how much he's done in sales, customer money screen, edit prepaids, customer note screen, aging screen, invoice screen. We do have full aging in here for customers that have accounts for you. Customer miscellaneous screen. Can they edit a customer? Can they delete a customer? Invoicing, can they do an invoice to customers from the customer screen? Payments, can they accept a payment from a customer? Maintenance, and the UDF page, which we talked about a while ago. Now we'll go to the vendor. Does this clerk need access to the vendor screen? Usually not unless they're doing purchase orders. So if, they, if you uncheck this, this clerk can't get to the vendor screen. Um, unless you're doing purchase orders or adding a new vendor, I can't see any reason why a clerk would need access to this screen. Vendor edit, delete, that's a dangerous one. <laughs> doing a purchase order, making a payment to a vendor, maintenance, vendor returns, receive in inventory, and the UDF page on the vendor screen. Now this is probably the most important screen for doing security if this is a if this person is a manager 
check here how manners that it can override POS blocks in other words everything that's blocked in the program if this is checked which if you're the owner of the store you want this checked you can override anything there's some areas in the program say editing a price on a sale item in other words you put an item up on the invoice and and the guy says I need a little better price and you can click a button to say edit and if the clerk isn't authorized to give a discount it'll pop up a window and have the manager sign in and then he can do a discount and of course that privilege goes away as soon as you save that that um, line item can um, can this person exit the invoicing screen a lot of times you have a clerk in the invoicing screen and there's no reason for them to ever get out of it. All they're there for is to do sales. They don't need to be go poking around in the customer screen, the vendor screen, doing reports and things like that. So this will keep them from exiting in the screen. Override disapproved credit cards and checks, split tenders, credit cards. We have, uh, I think, 10 or 12 different split tenders. In other words, you can play with, pay your bill with two credit cards, a check, and a traveler's check all in one screen. Can void a CC with Mercury or our other um, processors. In other words, person comes in, they get a buy an item, they do it on a credit card, and then they come back and do a return, they want to do a void on the credit card. This allows them to do that. that this is for uh, managers only can add a tip or adjust a credit card same thing a manager the other options are edit pricing on the invoice can discount an, at the invoice with presets you can set up discount presets that allows them to do it but there's also an area that where you can set your own discount which is kind of dangerous uh, we found that to be a big ripoff in other words uh, Somebody comes in, buys something for a hundred dollars, and the uh, clerk gives them a ninety-nine percent discount. Um, <laughs> they end up paying a dollar for a hundred-dollar item, so this prevents that. Can edit tax at invoice. Normally, you don't need to do that. Can pop ca cash drawer at invoice. Uh, this is to pop a cash drawer open to make change or something without doing a sale. A lot of these items also are kept in a secret file that you as the owner can do a report on and we'll show you that report later on in another video. In other words, if a person pops a cash drawer for no reason, it makes a record of it, who it was, what time, and a lot of different things on here and in the customer screen, whatnot, if they do an invoice and back out of it without a reason, it makes a, a record of that. And it's a pretty powerful report. We've actually had to go to court on a couple cases where clerks were stealing, and we had to show them how we got the report and know who it was. And fortunately, unfortunately, every how you want to look at it, the clerks got arrested and put in jail. But they were stealing thousands of dollars from the owner. All to jump to sales screen when first signing on. What this does is when you sign into the system, it puts you right in the invoice screen without you have, having to, to select an invoice screen. It puts you right in there, and then if you're locked in there, you can't get out of it. Use many sales menu screen. I'll show you that. That's when you come into the system, and it brings up the menu screen. Even if you figure out a way, which now it's almost impossible to get out of the the sales screen. Um, there's no options, no buttons anywhere to go anywhere else except the sales screen. Snap, snapshot of sales. This is something that the owners like. They can walk in. If they're the manager, there's a certain button on the invoice screen. They just press it and it shows how much they've spent today on purchase of items, how much they made on it, total sales, and it's just a snapshot of today's sales. Override credit limits can open invoice profit window. And again, this is uh, something the owners love. Can add value to a gift certificate. In other words, if you have a gift certificate and the guy's low on it, you can add value to it at the invoice screen. Now we'll go over to the inventory. 
Okay, the inventory screen is some place you want to keep people out of too. Unless, unless they're trusted employees to go in there and put in new uh, inventory or edit pricing. If this is not checked, they can't even get into the inventory screen. Change inventory levels, that's the quantity on hand. Inventory pricing, inventory vendor, which vendor you're buying from. Manager special setup, we have manager specials you can set up ahead of time. You know, and these manager specials will take effect on a certain date from this time to this time during the day. So say you're having a special on Saturday from 12 noon to 3 o'clock on fruit <laughs> for no better item. So you could say, okay, on July 14th between 12 and 3 o'clock, this item is 20% off or you can say a dollar off either way. You're allowed to edit the inventory, delete inventory. It is best never to delete inventory because when you delete inventory, it deletes the history records for your money. Our system runs a perpetual database that no matter how long you've been using it, you can go back to a certain date between this time and that time or between this date and that date and get a report of all your sales, everything. But when you delete an inventory item, it grabs all that sales history and deletes it along with it. There's just it's just better on the inventory to say it's inactive instead of deleting it. Is this person allowed to add new inventory? Can he see the UDF page? Verify inventory count screen. We'll we'll explain that when we show you the inventory screen. Can edit quantity on hand. That was another way people were ripping off store owners. Say you had 10 on hand, and say you had 30,000 items in your inventory. They would go in and sell an item, and then your quantity on hand would come down to nine. They'd come back into the inventory screen, bump it back up to 10, and it would look like that item was sold, but there was still a sales record in the system over it, and that was something they had a hard time getting over. And there is also a second hidden sales record of all your sales that only the programmers here at uh, Rocket POS know about. So if it ever came to really question a clerk, one of our programmers can go into that secret file and look up the date and time that you think something happened and we can uh, prove whether it was happened or not. Inventory adjustment screen. This allows mass adjustments of uh, inventory, pricing, and quantities. Edit matrix items on a grid. We'll show you what that is in the inventory. Can change barcode at the invoice and search screen. What this does, a lot of time, uh, like liquor stores, we have a lot of liquor stores using our software. Uh, a manufacturer, say Jack Daniels, will come out with a bottle of Jack, and they put a barcode on it. Well, that barcode's working, working, working. All of a sudden, a customer walks up with a new bottle, and that barcode doesn't work anymore. A lot of liquor manufacturers will put new barcodes on their items at different times in order to separate their batches, and they don't tell nobody. Well, when you scan it and you say, well, that barcode's not working, it allows you to add an additional barcode to that item, but the old barcode still works, and there's no limit on this. All right, let's go over to other. Other, we have a scheduling program. You can run that or not. Can edit the scheduler. Can run scheduled reports. And can use the caller ID. This here we'll cover in another uh, video a little bit more in depth. Accounting, we went over this already. Sales history, this here shows all sales this clerk by invoice line item and you can bring up the invoice header for an item by double clicking on it it brings up date time what station they were at the total the profit you made on it how it was tendered this was tendered with cash could have been a check or a credit card 
if it was a credit card, it'd have the approval and everything in here on it. Uh, company notes that were printed on the invoice. If it was a return, service notes, miscellaneous. And nice thing about this, if you know the clerk and you know the date, you can come in here and find the invoice that was done. Because say the customer coach says, can you send me a copy of that invoice? This is one of the places you can do it. You email them a copy of the invoice you're setting on. And there's other places in the program you can do this too. It's just nice to have multiple places to be able to do this. And we went over commissions a little bit. You can set up a percentage. And um, on the inventory item, you can say whether it's a commissionable item or not when it's sold. Spiffs, you should know what spiffs are. You can give them a rate on that. UDFs, again, you can change these titles to what you want. And the dining room, we'll go over a dining room uh, layout that it's a matter of flipping, flipping a switch in the point of sale and it turns into a dining layout. It's not really made for fine dining. But if you own a store and say have a little sandwich shop connected to it, say you have a gift shop and a sandwich shop or something, um, it's really nice. You can go in here and sell hamburgers and whatnot and still use the same point of sale to sell your items. Because one screen will look like the dining room package where another computer in your gift shop will look totally different. It's a pretty neat setup. A lot of people. I just wanted to show you two more things real quick. Let's go over to security rights and you see this button that says clone security settings. Say you have just your standard clerk and we'll say John Smith's our standard clerk although we have him set as a, a manager but we'll say he's our standard clerk and you went through all the trouble figuring out all the settings you're going to give him you know what he can access to and everything and you hire a new person. And you're thinking, oh, geez, i got to go through and figure out all these settings again. You don't really have to do that. So say John's a regular person and Stacy's a regular person. So you just come in here and say clone security settings. Select a clerk. Clone all security settings from John. And you're going to post them into Stacy. So you say clone. And it's done. Now Stacy has all the same settings as John. And you can see we flagged her as a manager because John is. Now we'll check Karen here. See, Karen is not a manager. So we'll go back to Stacy if you wanted to do this. I mean, this is just showing you how to do it. So we'll go into um, Stacy. Or no, let's go into Karen. Sorry. And hit clone to Stacy. Now if we go to Stacy. We she, see she is not a manager. So you can post all these security systems in one fell swoop. Another thing I want to go over a little bit here. Report level security. All of our reports are at our level A. In other words, if you are allowed to run reports, you can run all reports at level A. But on the reports, you can put different reports at different levels. And unless this clerk is at least that level, they can't run that report. So in other words, say your daily money report shows all your money you took in, all your costs and everything. You'd want to set that, say, at an M. Well, if this clerk's an A and he goes try to run that point, report, see how much money you made, he can't do it. Okay? Because he's not an M level person. You as the owner should always set yourself up as a Z and besides that, you have to be a Z level to change the level on the reports. You can't be an A and change the levels. I also want to real quickly show you how the UDFs work. Go into File, System Defaults, Company Setup. Go to UDF Titles page. Select Salespeople. And say we want to track the birthdays of, uh, of our people. Say edit, and here we would say birthday. Save it, close. And 
Now we're using our first UDF, which again is user defined field as birthday, and say old John here was born in um, 53, 52. And so it, his birthday would be there. And then there's a report you can run to get everybody's birthday for a certain month or whatever you want to do. And like I said, all these here fields here are user defined. You may want to keep the name of his wife here or something, you know, whatever you want to use it for. That's why it's user defined. That's it. Thanks.